Greetings, Spooky fans! Michael here, and years ago I played, and didn't get anywhere close to finishing, a Pokemon ROM hack where the starter options were not traditional starter Pokemon. It was still a grass, fire, water trio, but the Pokemon you could choose from have never been starters before. I think it was Budu, Magby, and Horsey, but I'm not totally sure. Also, don't ask me what the ROM hack was, I do not remember. I thought it'd be fun to do the same thing that those ROM hack creators did, creating my own trio of starter Pokemon using existing Pokemon. Also, I'm not going to just do a grass, fire, water trio, I'm gonna make some other type trios as well. Also, I should probably mention that other creators have done videos like this with a similar concept, but I promise mine will be distinctly different from theirs. Theirs had certain criteria for how they pick starter Pokemon, while my criteria will be whatever the hell I want. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel and tap that bell for notifications since less than half of my viewers are subscribed, which no, no, no sad. And let's dive in to picking my own starter trios from existing Pokemon. First, I'm gonna start off with the classic grass, fire, water trio. And basically the main thing I'm gonna be looking for are Pokemon that are three stage evolutionary lines for the three different types. Also, I should mention that I don't care about their evolution methods at all. A starter has to be a level up evolution, but if I limited myself to just that kind of leveling up, then I'd have trouble picking options. So just assume the evolutionary methods are changed to be leveling up for these Pokemon. Another thing I'm not gonna worry about is the strength or the abilities. Basically just assume all of the Pokemon I go over have typical starter level up methods, abilities, and stats. First, let's go over all my grass type options. And I actually have quite a lot. Immediately in gen one, we have Bellsprout, Weepin' Bell, and Victory Bell. They are grass poison rather than pure grass, but like, so is Bulbasaur. These Pokemon work much better than the Oddish line, since Oddish's split evolution into Vileplume and Bellossum makes things a little weird. There is a stone evolution for Victory Bell, but remember, we don't care about evolution methods. The biggest drawback to these three though, is that they are plants. That may seem like a silly thing to say about a grass type Pokemon, but if you think about it a little more, it's not. Virtually every grass type Pokemon is either a plant with a face, pretty much, or it's some other kind of creature with plant attributes, usually animals. All of the existing grass type starters are animals with plant attributes rather than just being sentient plants. Bellsprout is just a sentient plant. The next candidate would be Hopip, Skiploom, and Jumpluff. These do have a secondary flying type, but that doesn't cause any issues with canceling out their fire weakness. Plus, Rowlet and Dartrix are flying types too. They would need a stat buff and evolution level adjustment, but aside from that, they're pretty solid options. Well, except, are they animals? I'm not, like, they're just kind of blobs, I guess? Well, Hopib's ears kind of look like a cat, so like, maybe? Next are Seedot, Nuzleaf, and Shiftree. These are pretty cool options since they start out pure grass type, but gain a secondary typing upon further leveling up, like a lot of other starters. The stone evolution and stats would need to be changed, but aside from that, these are in good shape. Seedot is unfortunately just a sentient plant, well, I guess, unfortunately for this criteria. I don't mind. It's a little acorn with little eyes, it's so cute. So while CDOT doesn't really fit the animal with plant attributes design constraint, Nuzleaf and Shiftree are based on not just plants. They're based on the Japanese yokai, a tengu, which is certainly not just a plant. So CDOT doesn't meet the criteria, but the other two do. Next would be Lotad, Lombre, and Ludicolo, but these would not work due to their secondary water typing. Not only does that conflict with another starter type in the trio, but it also removes their fire weakness. They also would not work as water type starters for the same reasons. So when I talk about the water type options, I'm just not gonna bring them up. Next would be Budu, Roselia, and Roseraid, another grass poison line. They would all need a stat upgrade for sure, plus the friendship and shiny stone evolutions would have to go. Aside from that, they're pretty solid options, except for the fact that they're just plants. Well, actually, Roseraid does have arms and legs, 
and it's partially based on someone attending a masquerade ball, so maybe that could work. Next would be Swaddle, Swadloon, and Levani. Get rid of the friendship evolution and buff their stats a bit, and these could work well, especially since they're not solely plants. The main issue with them comes from the four times weakness to fire. It might be all right in a game where your rival takes the weaker starter, but otherwise you'd be screwed in the first battle if the opponent Pokemon already knew Ember. Next would be Bounsweet, Steeny, and Zarina. These would work great if the stats were adjusted a bit and the evolution method was changed. Steeny and Zarina are clearly based on more than just a plant, and they even have a fun signature move, Trop Kick. So that does it for our grass type options, but what about our fire type options? Well, like dating in a small town, your options are limited. First are Magby, Magmar, and Magmortar. Their evolution levels and methods would need altering, plus their stats would need a big adjustment since Magby and Magmar have much higher stats than typical starters at their stages. Once those changes are made though, these fit well as a three-stage fire type line. Then would be Litwick, Lampent, and Chandelure. Their stats and evolution methods and levels would need altering as per usual, but these also have a secondary ghost typing. While secondary typings are pretty commonplace for starters, Ghost is a pretty OP one for the base form to have, making it immune to early game tackles, pounds, and scratches. And that's it. Those are literally the only two three-stage fire type evolutionary lines that are not starters. And one of them took four generations to reach three stages. There are a couple others that look like they might fit, like Colossal and Talonflame, but they don't because the base forms are not fire type. Unfortunately, neither Magmortar nor Chandelure fit the typical fire type starter criteria of being based on an animal that's part of the Chinese Zodiac. Well, mostly, I think Cyndaquil being a rat and Fennekin being a dog are a bit of a stretch, but all the other ones fit well. However, we're just gonna have to live with that because of how limited my options are. If we expanded it to two stage fire type lines, then Rapidash and Camerupt could work well for the horse and ox, but I'm not doing that. So they are not here. Now on to the water type options. Poliwag, Poliwhirl, and Poliwrath would work well in a generation one game, but the added complexity of Politoed from gen two onward messes things up in my eyes, just like Bellossa messed things up for the Oddish line. Next would be Horsey, Seedra, and Kingdra. This is a great line, but with two big flaws. The first is that Kingdra's dragon typing is probably too OP, as it makes it no longer weak to fire. A starter gaining a secondary typing that makes them no longer weak to the type in the triangle that was strong against them is not a big issue. They've done it before. Empoleon gained the steel typing, making it no longer weak to grass, but they got around that by giving Torterra a secondary typing that was strong against steel ground. So in their fully evolved forms, Torterra was still strong against Empoleon. So Kingdra could work as a starter if the grass type starter gained a secondary typing that was strong against Kingdra, namely Fairy. So if Whimsicott or Shenotic had a third stage, then maybe they would work well with Kingdra. Dragon type would also work, but Dragon is weak to dragon, so it would kind of reverse the triangle too and it'd be kind of crazy. But honestly, I still hope they do that someday because that would be wild and we'll probably end up with three really dope starters. So Game Freak, please make water dragon, fire dragon, and grass dragon starters someday. The dragon typing isn't Kingdra's only issue though. The other is that Kingdra ain't got legs. All water starters are capable of traversing at least somewhat well on land. The one that pushes this the most is Primarina, but it can still get around on land, albeit slowly. All the other water starters can just straight up walk. That's why no water starters have been based on 100% aquatic creatures like fish. This is basically a long-winded way of saying that if you put Kingdra on land, it would have some trouble. Well, not in the games, because it would just float, but in the anime, it would pull a Goldeen. The next option would be Azuril, Meryl, and Azumarill, but Azuril is not a water type. If they changed that, then I could consider them. Next would be Sfeel, Celio, and Walrein. 
They can traverse on land and are a nice design progression, but their secondary ice typing makes them strong against grass from the start, which should not be the case for water starters. It's okay for a starter to gain a secondary typing that makes them strong against the other starter that was previously strong against them. The main example being Infernape gaining the fighting type, which made it good against Empoleon's steel type. However, that reversing of the matchup doesn't occur until both of them are fully evolved. If you had a Sfeel that could powder snow the grass type starter at the very beginning of the game, that just wouldn't be fair. Finally would be Timpole, Palpitoad, and Seismitoad. These fit quite well, as all can traverse on land relatively well, Timpole has to hop, and their secondary typings don't cause any issues with the grass type. In fact, their line's typing matches the Mudkip lines exactly. With all the options covered, my final preferred new starter trio would be CDOT, Magby, and Timpole, becoming Shiftree, Magmortar, and Seismitoad. I chose Shiftree because its final evolved form is the least plant-like, aside from maybe Zarina, but also I just really love CDOT. I chose my mortar because my only other option was Chandelure, and as I mentioned earlier, the ghost typing seemed too OP for an early game starter. Finally, I chose Seismitoad because it did not have any disqualifying factors like all of the other water starter options. So this is my replacement starter trio. Let me know in the comments below which one you would pick. I would probably pick Magby, because while I don't love Magby or Magmar, I quite like Magmortar, because arm cannons are objectively cool. But what if there were starter trios for other type triangles? What Pokemon would be a part of them? Well, the first step is deciding what type triangles we make starter trios of. And we actually have fewer options than you might think. There are a lot of offensive type triangles. For example, Psychic Fighting Dark or Ground Steel Ice. However, these are not perfect type triangles because while they work in the offensive direction, they don't work in the defensive direction. This Reddit post explains that grass, fire, water is a perfect type triangle, meaning that each type is not only super effective against one type, but it also resists it. The other triangles I mentioned are not perfect because a resistance is missing, there's an immunity instead of a resistance, or some combination of both. But there are a few other perfect type triangles aside from grass, fire, water that the original Reddit poster mentions in their post. And I'm gonna make starter trios for those type triangles. The first of them is grass, ground, poison. The grass type options are almost the same as before, but with some distinct changes. The first is that the Ludicolo line is an option again, because the water type is no longer an overlap and Ludicolo is still weak to poison. However, that type overlap problem means I can no longer use grass poison type Pokemon, namely Victory Bell and Rose Raid, so they're no longer options. So what are our ground type options? First would be Geodude, Graveler, and Golem. Classic ground types, but also rock types. This doesn't cause an issue with the type triangle though, but it does make them immediately terrible against the grass starter, which to me seems unfair. Next would be Rhyhorn, Rhydon, and Rhyperior. They are in a virtually identical situation to the Golem line. Next would be Swinub, Piloswine, and Mamoswine. These are also great, but their ice typing makes them strong against the grass starter, which they're supposed to be weak to. It's the same issue that the Sphiel line had. Next would be Trapinch, Vibrava, and Flygon. But these run into the same issue as Kingdra. Their dragon typing makes them too good and no longer weak to grass. If the grass starter got a fairy or ice secondary typing, this could work, but that's not the case with my existing options. Next are Gibble, Gabite, and Garchomp. They have the same issue as the Flygon line. The final ground options are Sandile, Crocorock, and Crocodile. They do have a secondary dark typing from the beginning, but that causes no issues with the grass ground poison type triangle. These are probably the best options. Finally, the poison type options. Weedle, Kakuna, and Beedrill are not weak to ground due to their bug typing. The Nidoking and Nidoqueen lines are almost good enough but their secondary ground typings at the end cause an overlap. 
Zubat, Golbat, and Crobat are not weak to ground, so they don't work. Ghastly, Haunter, and Gengar have the ghost typing issue I mentioned with the Chandelure line, plus the first two are not weak to ground. Victory Bell and Rose Raid overlap with Grass, as I mentioned earlier. Then Venipede, Whirlipede, and Scolipede's bug typing makes them not weak to ground, just like the Weedle line. And that's all of my options. Just disqualified, like that. Wow, what the heck? Why are there so many poison types that are just not weak to ground? So it looks like that this trio is impossible to complete properly, at least in the way that I was building it. However, since I've already put all this work in, I don't wanna just throw it away. So I'm just gonna pick a two stage poison Pokemon to finish it out just because I can. And I'm going with Arbok just cause snakes are cool. So for the final trio, I'm going with Arbok because of the reasons I just mentioned. Crocodile because it's the best ground type option and Ludicolo because I love Ludicolo. I must say, despite this trio having a lot of flaws, it looks cool. The next perfect type trio is Rock flying, fighting. Golem and Rhyperior are the first rock type options, which I already covered in the ground type segment. And they work better here since they no longer have the drawback of the four times weakness. Okay, they, they do still have their four times weaknesses, but those come from types that are not in the type triangle, so it's fine. The Alolan variants of the Geodude line are options as well now, and their electric typing isn't a problem since it doesn't impact their matchup with fighting or flying. It does give them another type to beat flying with, but they were already good against it. Next would be Larvitar, Pupitar, and Tyranitar, a trio that was not an option for ground since Tyranitar is not ground type. The typing change from rock ground to rock dark is not an issue, as the Rowlet line saw a type change at the same point. Next would be Aron, Lairon, and Agron, but their steel typing is an issue since they would be four times weak to fighting right at the beginning, which would be really unfair. Next are Rog and Rolla, Boldor, and Gigalith. These are very solid options as they're just a nice pure rock type all the way through, plus Gigalith is an awesome Pokemon. Finally is Roly Coley, Carcoal, and Colossal. The fire type, like with lots of other secondary types mentioned, does not cause any conflicts with flying or fighting. Next are the flying type options. The regional bird lines of Pidgeot, Staraptor, Unpheasant, Talonflame, and Toucanon seem like they would work, but their normal typing is actually an issue since it makes them no longer resist fighting in their base forms, which is something that I think they should do. Zubat, Golbat, and Crobat might work, albeit maybe too well due to four times resisting fighting right from the start. Hopip, Skiploom, and Jumpluff are options that work well since their grass typing has no conflicts. Finally is Rookity, Corvusquire, and Corviknight, the only line that has pure flying types at any point. Corviknight steel typing makes it no longer weak to rock, but if the rock starter gets a secondary typing that Corviknight is weak to, that's fine just like the situation with Empoleon and Torterra. Lastly for this trio are the fighting type options. Machop, Machoke, and Machamp are a classic option with no secondary typing to muddle things up. Actually, the only other fighting option is Timber, Garter, and Conkelder, the Pokemon intended to be the Unova version of the Machamp line. With all the options laid out, the trio that I am going with are Machop, Roly Coley, and Rookity becoming Machamp, Colossal, and Corviknight in their final forms. Machamp I picked simply because I like it more than Conkelder, but Colossal and Corviknight need a bit more explanation. I really wanted to use the Corviknight line because I love the fact that Rookie D and Corvusquire start out as pure flying types. It makes it a lot cleaner. However, as I mentioned earlier, Corviknight is not weak to rock, so I could only pick a rock starter that got a secondary typing that Corviknight was weak to. Thankfully, I actually had two options, Alolan Golem with its electric typing and Colossal with its fire typing. I picked Colossal because I like that Roly Coley starts as pure rock type while Alolan Geodude is rock electric. And also, I just like Colossal more than I like Alolan Golem. And now for the final perfect type trio, Fire, Steel, Rock. The fire type options are the same two options that we had before, but the rock type options are a lot less than in the previous type triangle. The Agron and Colossal lines are no longer options due to type overlap. 
Additionally, while the rock ground types are still weak to steel, they are not great options either, since they all start out as rock ground, meaning they would be good against the steel type starter immediately. All of the other rock type options I mentioned earlier are still fair game. So now we just have to go over the steel type options. First are Magnemite, Magneton, and Magnezone. Their secondary electric typing causes no conflicts with this triangle. Next would be Beldum, Metang, and Metagross. They would need a power nerf and Beldum would actually need to learn moves, but aside from that, they're fine since their psychic typing isn't a conflict. Finally is Clink, Clang, and Clink Clang. Pure steel types with no issues whatsoever. With all these options covered, my fire steel rock trio is Magby, Clink, and Rock and Rolla, becoming Magmortar, Clink Clang, and Gigalith. I picked Magmortar for the same reasons as earlier, not having the ghost type. I picked Gigalith because I love Gigalith and the only other option was Alolan Golem and Kling Kling was picked to preserve the single typing of the whole trio, which I thought was nice and clean. To summarize, my Grass Fire Water trio was Shift Tree, Magmortar, and Seismitoad. My Grass Ground Poison trio was Ludicolo, Crocodile, and Arbok. My Fighting Rock Flying trio was Machamp, Colossal, and Corviknight. And my Fire Steel Rock trio was Magmortar, Kling Kling, and Gigalith. Let me know in the comments below which Pokemon from each of these starter trios would be your pick. And thanks so much for watching, with an extra special thanks to my patrons over on Patreon, who are helping support my channel independent of fluctuating YouTube ad rates. If you want to help support me in the same way, the link is in the description below. Also, if you want to check out some more of my fun Pokemon content, I recommend these videos here. Alright, that's all I have for now, so until next time, big fans, gotta catch them all!